Evolution of the Baltic Sea The Baltic Sea is about 1,600 kilometres long and on average 190 kilometres wide with a surface area of about 386,000 square kilometres. The Baltic Sea can be considered as an arm of the Atlantic Ocean that intrudes deeply into the continental hinterland as it is tied to the North Sea via an intricate system of straits. Meies laiub meile kõigile koduni armas Läne meri. Aga kuna ja kuidas kujunes selle mere nõgu, ei seda ei tea teegi täpselt. Väga suured lahkarramused, aga ühes on kõik ühel meelel, et siin osalenud väga paljud erinevad geoloogilised tegurid. Alates tektoonikast, mandrija toimest, suurte jõgede erosioonist ja veel paljuski muust. This long and complex history means that the depression itself is considerably older than the present day Baltic Sea. A body of water that has only existed since the retreat of the last continental ice sheet some 14,000 years ago. The Baltic Sea of today is relatively shallow. The mean depths of the other parts of the Baltic Sea, the Baltic proper, 65 metres, the Bothnian Sea, 68 metres, the Bothnian Bay, 43 metres, the Gulf of Finland, 37 metres, and the Gulf of Riga at 26 metres are rather modest. However, large depth variations occur as a result of the highly rugged sea floor, expressed in various forms of deeps, valleys and trenches that alternate with plateaus, shallow banks and escarpments. The deepest point measured is the Landsort Deep at 459 metres, slightly north of Gotland, which is considerably deeper than the greatest depths in the other parts of the Baltic. The Bothnian Bay, 147 metres, the Bothnian Sea, 294 metres, the Orland Sea, 301 metres, the Gotland Deep, 245 metres, the Gulf of Finland, 123 metres, and the Gulf of Riga, 67 metres. The depth in the southern part of the Baltic is largely less than 50 metres though it exceeds 100 metres in the Gdansk Dispression, 116 metres, and the Bornholm Basin at 110 metres. The Baltic Sea is one of the largest expanses of brackish water in the world, and the reasons for this can be explained by three main factors. Firstly, the water exchange with the North Sea, and thus the oceans of the world through the Danish Straits is very limited. Secondly, its catchment area of about 1.6 million square kilometres is drained by more than 250 rivers that contribute about 660 cubic kilometres of fresh water to the Baltic Sea every year. And thirdly, the amount of precipitation exceeds evaporation. Thus, despite being connected to the North Sea, where salinity is normally about 3.5% or 35 grams of salts per kilogram of water, the surface water salinity of the Baltic Sea decreases steadily from the Danish Straits, 10 to 16 grams of salt, across the central Baltic Sea, 6 to 8 grams, towards the north and northeast. As a result, the most distal areas are practically fresh water, containing only 1 to 2 grams of salts. Isolation from the Atlantic Ocean also shelters the Baltic Sea from noticeable tidal currents and sea level fluctuations. Though in response to the regional wind situation, changes in water level can occasionally amount to several metres. The long-term sea level changes of the Baltic Sea, on the contrary, have been considerable, mainly because of crustal rebound following the diminishing weight of the melting continental ice sheet and water level changes in the world ocean. Today, the low-lying southernmost coastline of the Baltic Sea is slightly transgressive, meaning that the coastal areas in the southern Baltic are being gradually inundated by seawater, while in its northern parts, new land areas are continuously emerging from the sea. 
The gently rising coasts in the northern Baltic region are mostly cut into Precambrian crystalline bedrock, where an intricate and greatly dissected shoreline with countless small islands occurs. These islands and skerries are most numerous in the region between Stockholm and the open waters of the Gulf of Bothnia and off the southwest coast of Finland, and have been geographically grouped into the Stockholm, Orland and Turku archipelagos. It is estimated that these three archipelagos may have altogether about 90,000 islands and islets. The other two large groups of islands in the eastern and southern Baltic, the Danish and West Estonian archipelagos, have developed in areas of Paleozoic and Mesozoic sedimentary rocks. The central Baltic, however, has only few solitary islands, Gotland, Erland, Fordø, Stora and Lilla Karlso, that have Paleozoic limestone cores. The crystalline basement rocks underlying the Baltic Sea mostly formed about 1.5 to 2 billion years ago. These rocks that are part of the Baltic Shield are exposed in the northern Baltic and in the adjacent mainlands of Finland and Sweden. In the central and southern Baltic, the crystalline rocks are, however, covered by younger sedimentary rocks of Paleozoic and Mesozoic age. The oldest sediments deposited on the crystalline basement are from the Ediacaran period and are found in an area of the present-day Gulf of Finland. The Lower Cambrian Seas, more than 500 million years ago, already partly covered the area of the present Baltic Sea depression, and sedimentary rocks of this age are exposed on shore outcrops in northern Estonia and in Skorna and Småland, Sweden as well. In the earlier Ordovician, most of the Baltic continent became inundated by the waters of the Iapetus Ocean. This sea, known as the Paleobaltic Basin, spread almost over all the present Baltic Sea area and covered vast territories for at least 50 million years, while gradually shrinking southwards since Silurian time. The bedrock of the southern Baltic consists of Cretaceous chalky limestones that are also well exposed in magnificent shore cliffs on the island of Mern in Denmark and Rügen in Germany. The most remarkable shoreline forming escarpments are known respectively as the Baltic and Silurian clints. The roughly 1,600 km long Baltic clint, cut into Cambrian and lowermost Ordovician rocks, extends from Lake Ladoga in Russia in the east to the island of Erland in the west. The best spots to enjoy the views of this magnificent cliff are at Udria in northernmost Estonia and Pakrikabe in northwestern Estonia. A last glimpse of the Baltic Clint can be had at Osmusar Island offshore Estonia, where it then disappears into the waves of the Baltic Sea in order to rise again on Erland Island offshore from Sweden. The other extensive cliff section is the about 500 km long Silurian Clint, cut into Silurian rocks, that makes its first appearance on Muhu Island and then is observable as a series of various sized shore cliffs along the northern edge of Sarimar Island. After plunging into the Baltic Sea waters, it can be detected on sonar screens as a prominent escarpment developed in the sedimentary rocks of the central Baltic Sea. The clint rises to the surface again on the northwestern coast of Gotland. Here, numerous striking high shoreline cliffs can be visited starting from Halshook in the northern part of Gotland and ending with Hooklint on the western part. Kui vana on Läänemeri kui veekogu, ka seda ei teata täpselt. Arvatakse seda kujunes pärast viimase vaikseli mandrijää taandumist. See on siis umbes 13-14 tuhat aastat tagasi. Aga ega see ei olnud õige meri, ta oli suur, magedaviline veekogu, mida kutsuti Balti jääpaisjärveks. Its development was largely governed by melting and retreating of the continental ice sheet, 
and by the land uplift caused by deglaciation. All this was combined with a rapid sea level rise in the world ocean caused by ice melting. As a result, the connections of the evolving Baltic Sea with the world ocean in front of the retreating Scandinavian ice sheet changed several times. The history of the development of the Baltic Sea after the Ice Age is known to be through a series of brackish water sea phases, characterised by a salty water inflow from the North Sea that alternated with freshwater lake phases. The first phase of the Baltic Sea development is known as the Baltic Ice Lake, which developed in front of the receding ice sheet more than 10,000 years ago. In its earliest stages, the Baltic Ice Lake had only one outlet, a mighty waterfall around the present Öresund area in southern Sweden. Because Balto Scandia experienced different rates of uplift in different areas, and because the Öresund area emerged faster than the water level in the ice lake, this outlet gradually ceased to let water flow through. The Baltic Ice Lake came to an abrupt end about 11,600 years ago when the lake waters broke through a channel near Billingen Mountain in central Sweden. After establishing a connection with the salty waters of the Atlantic Ocean, a new phase of the Baltic Sea, the Yoldia Sea, started. This sea stage lasted for about 900 years. Continuous and rapid uplift in south-central Sweden led to a shallowing of the connecting sounds with the ocean and the final damming resulted in the formation of a new freshwater body, the Ancillus Lake. This new lake phase lasted from about 10,700 to 9,800 years ago. The southerly expansion of the Ancillus Lake was followed by its sudden large-scale drainage, when a new outlet to the ocean was opened by the rising water level and erosion through the Danish Straits area. The first signs of salty water inflows from the ocean about 9,800 years ago mark the end of the freshwater Ancillus Lake, introducing a new brackish water stage called the Litterina Sea. By this time, Scandinavia had become free from permanent ice and thus ceased supplying the Baltic Sea with fresh meltwaters. However, a rapid raise in global sea levels continued, boosted by rapidly melting ice masses in North America and the Arctic. Pärast jääaega nimelt Atlantise kliimastaadiumil oli kliima palju palju soojem kui praegu. Ja see tõttu liustikult sulasid ning ookeanid veedase tõusis ja samuti tõusis see veedase ka Lääne meres. Kui tumbes 5-6000 aastat tagasi, soolase vee sisse tung vähenes ja kujunes nii nimetatud Limnea meri, mis eksist järib ka praegu. Present-day land movements are plus 9 mm in the northern parts and minus 1 mm per year in the southern extremities of the Baltic Sea. This forces the waters of the Baltic Sea to inundate its southern coast, whereas new land areas are still emerging in the region of the Gulf of Bothnia. This continuous land uplift will cause the Gulf of Bothnia to split into two water bodies within the next 4,000 years, and thus establish a land bridge between the Vasa Finland and Umior areas in Sweden. Lähenemere areng jätkub ka tulevikus ja need muutused on väga suured. Näiteks meie saarema, hiiuma ja muhuma kastad kokku nii oma vahel kui ka mandriga, mis viib siis rivilahe hääbumisele ja ka paljude teiste piirkondale maastumisele.